J.R. Richard, who can best be described as a master of velocity on the pitcher's mound, possessed a rare gift, the ability to hurl a baseball with astonishing speed. To put this into perspective, his slider left the radar gun gasping at 98 miles per hour. But wait, there's more. His fastball, which was the main pitch in his arsenal, routinely breached the triple-digit barrier, occasionally soaring to an unbelievable 103 miles per hour. Unfortunately, though, JR fell on hard times, and his once-soaring career took an abrupt nosedive. And you can't help but wonder what went wrong. Well, we're about to tell you the sad story of JR Richard, how he went from hurling blazing fastballs to the stark reality of homelessness. March 7, 1950 marked the arrival of James Rodney Richard into the world. From an early age, it became clear he had a calling in sports, and he excelled in a number of them. However, baseball and basketball were where his natural talents took center stage. He was a high school pitcher with an undefeated record. Plus, to add more flair, he wrapped up his senior year without letting a single run slip through. But that's not all there was to his dominance, because imagine smacking four consecutive home runs in a game and then leading your team to a mind-blowing 48-0 victory as the pitcher. Well, that's just how exceptional this young talent was. Basketball, too, gave Richards the opportunity to excel, with scholarship offers flooding in from elite colleges across the nation. Surprisingly, though, he turned them all down flat, and instead he chose a different path, signing on with the Houston Astros to kickstart his journey in professional baseball, a decision that would set the stage for the remarkable twists and turns that awaited him. It so happened that back in 1969, the Houston Astros had their eyes set on J.R. Richard. Of course, with a towering 6-foot-8-inch frame and a solid 220 pounds during his high school senior year, his potential was undeniable, making him the second overall pick in the baseball amateur draft. Well, like many rookies, Richard had his share of the minor league grind over the next two years. Indeed, strikeouts piled up, but so did the need for refining his mechanics and mastering control. Finally, at the age of 21, on September 6, 1971, he stepped onto the Major League stage for his first game. It was a doubleheader against the formidable San Francisco Giants, and he dazzled by striking out 15, including the legendary Willie Mays three times, earning a win and tying a 17-year-old record for strikeouts in a starting pitcher debut. However, his control issues resurfaced, leading to a period of bouncing between major and minor leagues until 1975, when he solidified his spot in the Astros' pitching rotation for the next five and a half seasons. This giant of a man transformed into a strikeout wizard, clinching the single-season strikeout title in 1978 and 1979 with impressive numbers, which included 303 and 313 strikeouts respectively. As you'd expect, his dominance earned him a spot in the 1980 All-Star Game, marked by an extraordinary pre-break performance, including three consecutive complete game shutouts, 10 victories, 110 strikeouts, and an amazing ERA of 1.96. And about his best seasons? Well, it was in the 1977 season that Richard showcased his pitching prowess with a stellar performance, recording nine innings and seven strikeouts against the Atlanta Braves on April 8th. Throughout the first half of that season, he secured seven complete game victories, amassing nine wins and six losses by the All-Star break. Plus, despite some struggles in July and early August, Richard rebounded, pitching three complete games that included two shutouts between August 27th and September 17th. Closing the season on a high note, this sensational player notched two more complete games, with a season-high 14 strikeouts in his final start against the Dodgers on October 2nd. Also ending with nine wins in his last 12 decisions, Richard led the Astros pitching staff in various categories, including wins, starts, complete games, innings pitched, walks, and strikeouts. It was such an incredible season that his notable achievements included an 18-12 record, a 2.97 ERA, and 214 strikeouts when it ended. His offensive contributions were also noteworthy, going 20 for 87 with two triples, two home runs, and seven runs batted in. But his brilliance didn't end there. In the 1978 season, he was on fire again as he rebounded from a challenging opening day performance to pitch a complete game two-hit shutout in the next outing against the Dodgers. Additionally, in an eight-start period from April 26 to June 4th, he threw six complete games, including two consecutive shutouts, lowering his ERA from 4.15 to 3.05. By the All-Star break, Richard had already compiled an 8-9 record with a 3.49 ERA and 157 strikeouts. In the second half of the season, he delivered exceptional performances, earning him the title of National League Pitcher of the Month in July. 
During this period, his strong finish included breaking Don Wilson's club record for strikeouts on August 21st and surpassing Tom Seaver's NL record for strikeouts by a right-hander in his final two starts. This superstar would go on to conclude the season with 18 wins, 11 losses, and a 3.11 ERA, all combining to help him lead the team in various pitching categories. However, ominous signs would soon emerge in the super-talented player's story, as shoulder and back soreness started to plague him, limiting him to a mere two innings in the All-Star game. As typical in such cases, the Astros organization and media began questioning his condition, with some rumors circulating about the struggling player. These rumors were mostly accusing him of a lackadaisical attitude, drug use, and even jealousy of fellow pitcher Nolan Ryan. And before he could even blink, the once exciting tale of J.R. Richard was on the brink of an unexpected turn. The Astros' response to Richard's health struggles was to place him on the 21-day disabled list, a decision that still perplexes the player to this day as he questions why he wasn't promptly taken to the hospital for a thorough diagnosis. Then, on July 30, 1980, a chilling incident occurred. And it happened that while casually tossing a ball around before a game, Richard collapsed. A stroke had caught up with him. Thankfully, though, an emergency surgery saved his life, addressing the issue which involved a complete restriction of blood flow in the major arteries on the right side of his neck. But then, shockingly, it was later revealed that he had also endured three strokes, coupled with arterial blockages in his right arm and a diagnosis of arterial thoracic outlet syndrome. Three strokes and he was still trying to do his best for the team? That's a testament to his dedication to the team. Sadly though, despite two years of rigorous therapy, a return to the minors, and a near full recovery, Richard faced yet another setback. This time, it was complications from his 1980 surgery that emerged, leading to severe pain in his right calf by 1983. And with doctors cautioning against the risk of further complications, a return to pitching became an impossible dream. Moreover, it became evident that his physical prowess had waned at this point. In 1984, the Astros released Richard, triggering a series of other unfortunate events in his life. And let's be real here, anyone might find their life going downhill at this point. Moving on from his professional baseball career, the once feared thrower also faced a series of financial setbacks, triggered by some bad investments he made. For instance, he fell victim to an oil business scam, resulting in a substantial loss of over $300,000. Additionally, divorce settlements took a toll on his finances, with the retired player paying $669,000 to his ex-wife. Despite these challenges, though, the determined player entered the Senior Professional Baseball Association in 1989, playing for the Orlando Juice. But unfortunately, that wasn't a successful venture either, as he was cut from the team during preseason play. Well, the hardships continued to stack up for this once successful baseball sensation. By the winter of 1994, he found himself homeless and destitute, living under a highway overpass in Houston. However, a ray of light emerged in 1995, when he became eligible for his pension from Major League Baseball. In the same year, he participated in the Old Timers Day game with the Astros, highlighting the complex and challenging journey of a once-dominant pitcher. Luck would also soon smile on him again, and another turning point in his life came through Reverend Floyd Lewis of the New Testament Church of South Houston. With Lewis's support, guidance, and a new steadfast faith, Richard triumphed over homelessness and despair, eventually becoming a minister in the church. After all his misfortunes and ordeals, J.R. Richard emerged as deeply committed to uplifting his community, actively participating in efforts to establish youth baseball leagues in Houston. His firm belief was that engaging kids in baseball and helping them channel their energy into a positive pursuit helped to divert them from joining gangs. Plus, among his many achievements, this legend of the game took immense pride in being a member of the prestigious 12 Black Aces, which is an exclusive club comprising 12 African-American pitchers who achieved 20 or more victories in a single season. No doubt sharing this accolade with legends like Don Newcomb, Bob Gibson, Vida Blue, and the group's founder James Timothy Mudcat Grant is a testament to Richard's remarkable career. Despite the challenges he's faced, Richard adopted a forward-looking perspective, refusing to dwell on past hardships and emphasizing the importance of focusing on the present and future. Indeed, this philosophy formed the core of his motivational speaking engagements across the country. Yet, he candidly expressed a conviction that, had his career not been cut short, he could have been the all-time strikeout leader. And we might just see some sense in this claim because, with 1,493 strikeouts in his curtailed career, it's a sentiment that carries weight and reflects the enduring spirit of a remarkable athlete.